your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Hi, I'm Ben and I'm with the Kettering Bulldogs RI3D team. This is our day two recap. We got a lot done today, so I'm going to hand it off to Justin and JQ. Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm going to first talk about uh, some of the the, uh, the main superstructure that we have made so far. So this was uh, used uh, Vex one by one aluminum. So it has uh, pre-drilled holes every inch on it, which makes it really nice for um, bolting all together. But instead of bolting, we actually used rivets in our case, um, and also mounting everything else such as the polycarb, and which if you might notice, this polycarb is actually left over from the field of 2017 first game Steamworks. So uh, we got the polycarb all bolted on, we got the superstructure riveted together, um, and now I'm gonna hand it off to JQ, and she's gonna talk about a little bit of what we have so far for the ball movement. Hey guys, I'm JQ. So I worked on a lot of our indexer. So our indexer, we have these black tubes, which are just VEX tubes. Um, I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head. I wanna say about one inch or so. Um, but what this is working is we have a motor drive over here. So there's actually gonna be multiple, but we only have one set up and uh, the second one um, in the process. So first we have the intake will be across the board here so either it will the ball can come in here or it can come in here so to start if it's all the way over here the ball will come and then the um our indexer with that has poly um cord poly cord on it will come over and then feed it all the way to the back here where then the ball will come up to the shooter so that's our process there. We also experimented with different um, forms to hold the poly cord together because we were struggling with melting. Um, and our, right now our solution is just a little bit of a twist with zip ties on it. So now I'm going to hand it off to Luke. All right, before Luke comes in, by the way, we're going to be giving away a few things. So starting out, we have from our friends at Kettering University, a t-shirt that looks great. Well, not that exact t-shirt. I mean, that might be worth more money, but... Could be, I don't uh, know. But yeah, if you're interested in winning that, if you haven't seen the chat, type GoPro in chat. That's your opportunity to win. Uh, don't forget, you do need to be following the channel in order to be eligible. Make sure you click that follow button. And if you're interested in that, some extra luck, go ahead and give us a subscription, just a few bucks a month, or free the Prime Gaming. Appreciate your support. GoPro in chat. Let's get going. Hey guys, this is Luke, and today I did some behind the scenes work on the indexer, making some of the structure over here for holding the bars that have the polycore on them for sending over to the uptake. And then I worked a little bit on getting some of our motors all sourced out. So this one is a 775 Pro with a 7 to 1 gear ratio for most of our indexing. I think we're going to be using pretty much the exact form with the 775 and the 7 to 1 in a Versa Planetary. So we have three of those that are going to be working all together for getting our cargo from the intake over to our shooter. So something that we found pretty cool today was the motor mounts, these nifty little motor mounts from Thrifty Butts. I believe these are the, I can't remember the exact name off the top of my head, but they act as universal motor mounts. So we found this really helpful since it'll kind of fit right into our Versa frame that we've been using. And they've got a lot of different mounting patterns for different motors so that we will be able to have a lot of versatility in where and what we're able to mount to them. Worked out pretty well for us. And now we're just gonna be working on getting those all put onto the robot so our indexer can be functioning. Now I'm going to hand it off to Nick and Marvin with the intake. Hey everyone, I'm Nick Lipchick. And I'm Marvin Lopez. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the intake that we've been working on, hope that doesn't fall off, over the course of the day. 
So you can see here, we've got in the preliminary stages, we've both been a little bit busy with other things, but we've got one of the outer intake plates and one of the link arms. So this is a pretty stereotypical FRC four bar intake to where it stows vertically. And then as it goes out, it angles outwards in a position that is easy to collect balls in. So you can see here that these parts look pretty nice to be made by hand, and that's because we didn't. We routed these on the Omeo X8 that we have in Kettering's facility, and that is always one of the benefits of catting your robot before building it. So you can have a nice guide to actually whether you're making parts by hand, or you can send them out to be manufactured on a computer controlled machine. So that's about all the progress we have on the intake. We're still going to be manufacturing it and stay tuned over the course of the late hours of the night and we'll get that finished off. Now we'll be passing it on to Jesse and Ryan with the climber. And everybody just remind if you have any questions for the RA3D team here and what's going on with the Bulldogs, make sure you type F for subjects now in chat, ask your question. Uh, get your questions in early, because we tend to get a lot of them late and we have to wrap up. So make sure if you have any questions, you can always bring team members back, talk about what's going on. But right now, don't forget GoPros and Giveaway. We're going to be drawing for that in just a moment with more giveaways coming up new. Uh, hi, I'm Brian, and I've been working on the climber. For our climber mechanism, we have the Animark, our climber in a box, which we have the three-stage version, which can easily extend up to seven feet tall when it's attached to a robot, which will easily reach the tallest pole. But for this game, we're only allowed to reach up to about the five and a half foot range. So we've simply shortened the string on it. So it, can, so it only comes up to about five feet now, which they also have a two-stage version available, which, will, which should work much better compared to the three-stage one, simply due to the height. And then for actually attaching it onto our robot, we currently have some small L brackets on that we plan to actually beef up a bit so that once we attach it on, it shouldn't bend or anything. And then we just have a Falcon running that so that it just winds up the rope and that tensions the climber to bring it up and down. And then we'll bring the entire robot with it. And on to Ian with pneumatics. All right, before we get into that, we're going to draw for our giveaway. Uh, once again, it was for the uh, Kettering R3D t-shirt that's being uh, nicely modeled right here on screen, uh, by the way, so very nice on there. GoPro was the keyword for that because you can go pro at Kettering with their amazing programs that they have to offer. Find out more at Kettering.u. Uh, Ian Seven Grant is the winner. Congratulations. Make sure you shoot us a message for Subkits Now with all your information that we need, like your shirt size, mailing address, all that fun stuff like that. And we're actually going to start another giveaway uh, right away. We do have a couple of questions uh, that we'll uh, plan on taking just a little bit too. But our next giveaway is from our friends at Animark. Uh, and you just saw that Animark Climber being shown off. So we're going to call it one stage is the keyword. So number one and stage is the keyword. That's really all you need. It's just one stage uh, for this one on this climber. So one stage, type that in for a chance to win a $25 Animark gift card. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ian. I've spent most of the day working on pneumatics. We have a simple pneumatic loop with a few accumulators, the compressor, and then two pistons. These are most likely going to, well, not most likely, these are going to be used for lifting up the intake. The, we figured it would be the best way to move it up and down. And then we have this new rev pneumatic hub, as well as the actuator for it, which we will go on to Cole to explain. Hi everyone, my name is Cole. I'm here to talk a little bit more about the other work we've done with the electrical portion of our robot. Obviously on our pneumatic system we need solenoids. We're using four solenoids that we've used in a previous Robot in Three Days build to operate both sides of our pistons. They are multi-stage, uh, they're powered in and powered retraction. Coupling, those are going to be run off of the Rev pneumatic hub. And the whole system right now is in place and ready to run. All we need is to wire in CAN and wire in power to the pneumatic hub and the system will run off the robot currently. We've tested it multiple times today and it's running fine off the robot. We've done that so when we have more access to the robot, we can have some of our mechanical work pause and then our electrical sub team can come in and completely install the full pneumatic system and have it immediately running. We've done a lot of work on electrical today. 
we can see some of the work that we did very early this morning was mounting most of our electrical components. They are underneath the robot, upside down, which is looks pretty fun, and it's a very good way to use the space that we have, especially with our other subsystems that are going to be on top of the robot. We have our Rio, our Rev power distribution hub, and our motor controllers mounted. Our drivetrain was mounted and running yesterday. We have begun the process of wiring additional motors. Running off of Talon SRXs are going to be multiple 775 VEX motors. These are going to be running some of our other smaller systems on the robot, like the motors that are intaking and moving the game pieces around inside of the robot, and the motors that are going to be shooting the robot. We're trying to do a lot of work around the mechanical systems that are being put on this robot. So we're stressing the ability to quickly connect our components on and off the robot and be able to do most of this work off the robot. That's why on our 775 motors, we're using VEX Pro 775 Connects. These are a really useful tool that will convert the normal end of a 775 that has to have a wire soldered onto it to two Anderson connectors. I know anyone with FIRST Robotic experience who has used a lot of 775s know that those solder pads on the ends like to break off, and when they break off, you're really out of luck for using that motor. When you've got it just set to two Andersons, we can really extend the lifespan of this motor, and it's very easy to plug and play these and try them out in different positions and run different lengths of wire to and from them through the use of these Anderson connectors. That wraps up a good bit of our electrical system. We've done a lot of work on it, all mounted, and we can now talk a little bit about some of the great work that we've done programming our robot today. And before we get to the programming, we're going to draw for that Andy Mark uh, gift card. Uh, so he's going pretty quick. Don't worry, we will get your questions. I'm collecting all of them as we go through. Uh, so the winner of the Andy Mark gift card is going to be Eric Valley. Congratulations, Eric Valley. We just need your email address. Uh, Shoot that over to me and. Uh, We'll make sure uh, we get that over to you from Andy Mark. Congratulations for that. Let's start our next giveaway right away, too, from our friends at Rev Robotics. That's going to be for a $25 Rev gift card. And the key word for that's going to be Max Planetary. Max Planetary is your keyword for that. All one word. And good luck for that. Uh, actually, a real quick question I did get asked. Are we using Max Planetaries currently right now in the robot? Anybody answer that? Um, I do not believe so, actually. I think we're, um, everywhere that we're using a NEO is currently just being driven to the basic, uh, kit bot gearboxes. So they're not individually driven at all. All right, let's continue on with programming. All right. Oh, hi, I'm Jesse. I'm the programming lead. Uh, forgive me. My voice is a little shot right now. I've been talking so much all day, but, um, there's been a lot of work with programming. All of the systems have code that is ready to test and like the super basic mo move motor uh, every direction that we needed to test. But I need the subsystems to actually be built before I can test them. We've tested things intermittently such as the pneumatics which work and the shooter which was demoed quite a few hours ago at this point, but it works. So hopefully that same kind of deal works with everything else. And that's it for programming, so I'm going to pass it back to Tyler. All right, so we do have some questions uh, in chat that we'll take uh, for whoever wants to grab for each one. I'm just going to start from the top on here. Don't forget, once again, Max Planetary Secure to win a $25 Revrobox gift card. We also have uh, we also have uh, a bit more uh, coming in. Yeah, I know my microphone's a little odd on here, so apologize about that. Uh, Motion Hall asking, how are you playing to articulate the intake? I got this one. So we are planning on articulating the intake with a pneumatic piston on the back should we put pneumatics on our robot. But if we run out of time, we'll do the age old FRC trick of just putting the intake behind something and springing it outwards. And then when the match starts, we'll run it to kick it out. And then we just won't be able to retract it for the rest of the match. But hopefully we have the time to put a full pneumatic system on this robot. All right, next question coming in from uh, Ian Grant uh, asking, uh, do you plan on the intake being able to intake balls that are bouncing, or how do, you, how do you handle balls that might be bouncing? As of right now, we're really just going to wait for them to settle and then pick them up. Maybe our driver will be able to do some cool stuff like pinning them against a wall. I don't know. 
that hasn't really been something we've given too much thought to, but that's something you guys with longer than three days should give more thought to because that will definitely be one of the deciding factors in killer robots this year. Uh, I'm just going to answer this question somebody asked in chat from Dami G2727. Any update on Andy Mark's stock for Climber Box? Uh, we are not Andy Mark, so we can't answer that question, but I would recommend uh, that you reach out to either Andy Mark uh, or there is a mailing list if you go on Andy Mark's website for the Climber of the Box where you can get notified for that. So I know we have a couple here uh, that we're looking at using on the robot, so I don't know, maybe you can bribe us. We'll send one over to you. Who knows? So, uh, but yeah, make sure you uh, do check with the Andy Mark for that. Next question uh, coming out from uh, Zoombury. Uh, says, are you going to put a second panel under the robot to protect the electronics? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> there was actually, if you guys were paying attention yesterday or if you were here, here there was a panel down here um, that has been taken off and will be replaced with an aluminum belly pan to mount the climber to. Uh, I think we're just going to take that and slap it over the electronics, so that should be more than enough protection for it. All right, our next question is an, ele is an electronics question, uh, but before we do that, we're going to draw for the uh, Max, uh, the, the Keywords Max Planetary for the Rev Robotics uh, gift card giveaway before we wrap up the show. Uh, winner of that, <laughs> uh, wow, two days in a row for Peyton, holy cow. Uh, Peyton, I don't know what type of horseshoe you got, man, but congratulations uh, for uh, Peyton Young there from 461. Taking our, can, can we get some rigged emotes in chat, please? We, clearly, Peyton is rigging this so he can win, uh, but congratulations on that. Uh, let's start our last giveaway, by the way, from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. Uh, can we show some of the squish wheels uh, that are being used? Because that's what's being given away. So that's, a, that's what's being used on our intake right now, right? Awesome. Um, so if you're interested in uh, winning that, uh, go ahead and type Thrifty in chat. Thrifty is the keyword to win that. And if it's for a set of 10 of those squish wheels, that you might find us some good use on your robot as we have as well. Uh, next question uh, coming up on there was from uh, Delhi DX. What is the green breakout board that's on the Rio? Is it an IMU? Uh, the green breakout board that's on the Rio in the corner here is a gyro. It's, um, I don't remember the exact model of it, but it came in the kit of parts a couple years ago, and that's the one that we've used every year since we've had it. All right, a couple more questions coming in. Once again, if you've got questions, kind of last uh, moments to get them in for the actual show. Uh, Charles M479 asking, how is the, the wiring to the net to the new rev control system? Can you kind of describe the experience of doing the wiring on it? I could talk a little bit about that. So as far as the new rev control system, really focusing on the new rev power distribution hub, the wiring process has, it's frankly been a dream. These Wago connectors that just flip up and flip down make everything so much easier. We have a old power distribution panel, and for those of you who might not be familiar, on the old power distribution panel, you had to wedge in a screwdriver, or a lot of teams, you could buy specially bent screwdrivers or bend your own with a vise and a hammer. Wedge that in there, lift it up, and then put the wire in. It made something as wiring just any motor sometimes be a two-person job, given the angles that you have in your robot to try and get that screwdriver in and shove that wire in. With the new power distribution hub from Rev, these little connectors just flip up and flip back down. So you can really easy do it with one finger, even on my left hand, and it just makes going in so much easier. Another thing we're really happy about with this power distribution hub from Rev is the fact that on any of our, any of our breaker spots here can take 40 amps. Again, if we look back at our old power distribution panel, we had a limited availability of 40 amp breakers, only that first group and then the bottoms could not handle 40 amps of current. On the power distribution hub, everything has 40 amps of current. So for some of our motor controllers that we have down at the end, we can just wire them right, right in to the closest spot on the power distribution hub. Whereas if this was a power distribution panel, we would have to wire them all the way down, running wires over wires over can, not really a good practice. And another great feature of our new REV system is the voltmeter here, showing the current voltage of the plugged-in battery. That's uh, just a really nice feature. I, 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 would have been, I would have been in love with this without that. So that's just some more icing on top of it. So it's a really easy system to use, and it's made quickly prototyping things, throwing motors on and off, and tinkering a lot easier than the previous systems we've had. 
right, this could be a general question for anybody who wants to take it uh, from Killa Walsh. Uh, asking an opinion, uh, how do you see the human player function uh, during a match other than an auto? Do you find any value to the human player other than an autonomous? Who wants to take that? So, of course, human players are always valuable at any point in the game, whether it is autonomous or not. I think the largest difference in human player skill, if you want to say, can come from autonomous, because that's the point where they have direct control on where the balls are going. But regardless, you need a good human player in the station to be able to tell when to give your robots balls, whether they need to be preloaded and let fall onto the field before the robot comes up so they'll stop bouncing, or you have a robot that can just come right up and suck them. Your human player needs to have good match timing and be an integral part of the drive team. All right, uh, last question we have right now. I don't see any others past this. Um, so from Dead Row 000 asking, uh, any more insight on the fuzzy surface of the cargo balls? They're still fuzzy. Do we have, <laughs> do we have a cargo ball? So I think uh, one of our concerns was we're a little worried about the wear down that might occur as the season goes on as far as these power balls getting worn down and then what that means for a lot of the intakes and different mechanisms that you have to handle these. We haven't really been able to heavily stress test this to the point that some of these pieces would see at a competition, but I don't think we've seen much of them deteriorating too badly and I think the surface has held pretty well. We've been throwing them around on the field, trying to understand some of the heights they have to get, and running them through some of our prototypes. They haven't really gotten torn up that bad. So I think these are a concern for later competitions and as competition goes on at a single event, but we haven't seen anything too bad from them so far. It also should be noted that, uh, as he said, we haven't really had much of a chance to test it, uh, especially with the intake system. Our intake isn't done yet, so all the testing that we've done has been on a drill kind of do a hack shaft. So we haven't done it with full motor power, half motor power, anything like that. And it hasn't gone through our whole robot yet. So we're not entirely sure how it'll hold up, but given the way that it's evolved so far, it should hold up pretty well. All right, so a couple last things to just ask the team uh, if we, as we start to look towards the final day, because uh, this Robot 3 Days team is ending tomorrow night. The reveal is planned at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, so we look forward to seeing you of course, then don't forget to stick around with us anyways. Uh, we'll be doing more stuff tonight, but what's the immediate plan right now? What's uh, for tonight and then kind of tomorrow morning? What are your next steps that you really want to get done? Tonight is to attempt to finish our indexing system so that we can test it and try to feed the cargo all the way up to where our shooter will be. And is there more than that? I can, I can speak to it. But just the plan as far as the other system. The other thing that we have to deal with is tomorrow being work and school. We're going to have limited availability of our members. So something we're planning on doing is we're going to sit down tonight and very clearly map out what has to be done tomorrow and create a plan to do that so we can work tomorrow with some more flexibility as far as some students being only able to come in for a couple hours here and there or after work or even before work. So we're going to try and map out our plan for tomorrow tonight and hopefully run through it and stick to it as much as we can tomorrow. All right, so a couple last announcements for everybody. We're going to draw for that gift card in just a moment from the, I'm sorry, not gift card, but set of uh, two-inch thrifty squish wheels from the thrifty bot. Uh, so tomorrow, once again, 8.30 p.m. Eastern is the reveal. Afterwards, we're going to try to see if we can maybe play some matches with the robot. Who knows, right, uh, from that point where we go. But hopefully it's going to be functional for that. Uh, we also are going to have a, a one or two other RE3D teams on prior to 8.30 tomorrow. So uh, make sure you check that out. I believe we're going to have Snow Problem on, and I think a team from Wisconsin as well. So we'll be recording that. Don't forget to check out all of our videos that are being posted, by the way, uh, to uh, First Updates Now YouTube. we got a whole bunch for you to learn from. We'll have more coming tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so we look forward to seeing that as well. But let's draw for that giveaway uh, for the ThriftyBot Squish Wheels. And wow, this is just Indiana rigged all day. Indy Sam uh, winning a giveaway again. Wow, please rig emotes in chat uh, for this going on. But congratulations to all of our winners. Please make sure you reach out to me. Even if you won before, please reach out to me uh, so we can get your information for that. But we're going to let the uh, R3D team get back to work, I think. Anything else from you guys? We wrap up? Perfect. 
Uh, so we're going to head back to our regularly scheduled broadcast in just a moment. Thanks a lot for joining us. We hope you stick around. You can still ask more questions in chat, and we'll see you soon here on RA3D. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one-third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades 8 through 12 and located in the continental U.S. scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thank you to Annie Mark, Rev Robotics, and the Thrifty Bot for being official suppliers of the Bulldogs Robot in three days. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.